Kia ora, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, into our short survival series. In our last episode, Carmen Moulton overcame her challenge, succeeding perhaps where many thought she would fail. And now we find ourselves with yet another survivor and yet another scenario. The challenge in question this time, emergency shutdown. Our survivors for this challenge were working in a nuclear power plant when the cataclysm came. Now they're trapped inside, surrounded by the shambling bodies of what used to be their co-workers. The reactor is shut down, but we can't be sure if there's been a radiation leak. And so we'll need to get away fast before we find out the hard way. Radiation is an invisible killer in real life. And the same is true in Cataclysm. Perhaps we'll find a Geiger counter or a radiation badge that might be able to illuminate us. But for now, we must meet our first survivor. And he is an interesting one. Dylan Fan is a lab technician of this power plant. He is 38 years of age and is a relatively dexterous individual. Intelligent too. However, when we look at his traits, that's when we'll start to notice some irregularities. First of all, he is a competitive fencer, starting with foils and then moving on to sabers. Dylan competed nationally and dabbled with some of the historical fencing weapons afforded by Hema's popularity. Neat if we get our hands on something that can use that. He also requires less sleep. He has a light step, meaning he's going to be quiet when moving about. He is pain resistant and poison resistant. Now we get to the interesting stuff disorganized. Well, that can make sense. Dylan's desk is always overflowing, but illiterate. That's an interesting one for Cataclysm, as the definition of that negative trait in Cataclysm means that Dylan never actually learned how to read. Books and computers are off limits for him. That might be a soft lock to this challenge. I suppose we'll have to see. But that also leads me to believe that Dylan has somehow bluffed his way into being a worker here at this power plant. He also has poor hearing. So in the dark, we're not going to be as aware of what's moving around us. But even more strange, as we look at his proficiencies, he is proficient in biology and chemistry. So he learned them somehow. Perhaps he has an excellent retention of knowledge, being able to absorb what he could through classes over the years, but I don't know how he got around the tests. But yes, here we find ourselves deep in the belly of a nuclear power plant with Dylan Fan, with a chemistry set in hand. The power not long having gone out. It's first thing in the morning and he's feeling fresh, which makes me to believe that he has only just arrived for work. Oh boy, you're in for an interesting day, Dylan. So let us take stock of things. Having a look at our inventory here, we do have a smartphone, it is fully charged. He is currently wielding a chemistry set. That's not going to be so useful for us. The boots, the rubber gloves, the safety glasses, that's decent. Not a bad start for us. We also have our wristwatch telling us what the time is. We don't, however, have any kind of way of detecting radiation at this stage, but we have to hope that we're going to find something here. Ah, yes, and one other neat thing. In addition, to our fencing skills. Dylan also knows judo, so we can change between our different styles here. And so I think we will be picking up judo, or rather selecting it to begin with. As we can see, judo is a martial art that focuses on grabs and throws, both defensive and offensive. Dylan is resistant to most effects that can knock him on the ground, and he can counter grabs and take down attacks with a strong judo throw. We have to hope that that's going to be the case because grabbing is what makes zombies so dangerous early on. Let us drop this chemistry set for now and we're actually going to try and see if we can take the power source out of that, a medium battery. Okay, we've got that in our lab coat now. Yes, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to let a turn or two pass here as we're waiting in the dark. We have poor hearing, so we might not hear things moving around us, but I'd have to think that we'd hear things at least a little bit close to us, right? We'll find out one way or the other sooner or later. Let's have a look at our map, though. Dylan has a little bit of knowledge 
of the area around here. And wow, we can really see the true scale of this plant. It's massive. We have no idea where the nearest town is from here. Now, I'm sure that Dylan would, but then again, perhaps the strangeness of the cataclysm has given him a temporary amnesia. Just down here to the southwest, we have a lumber mill. We've also got a few other buildings tacked onto the power station here. We have a large power substation, another one here as well. And we have two hazardous waste sarcophagi on either side. And then finally, a parking garage. Up towards the top here, we've got a tree farm. So if we are able to get out of this place, I think perhaps following the road to the south might net us a city or a town. As far as I'm concerned, for Dylan, success will be reaching a refugee center or another populated area where others might be able to help him survive. Ah, let us take our first few steps in the dark here, mapping out the room that we're in and seeing if there is anything else in here. We can see a pigeon somehow. I have no idea where. Oh, outside. Okay, all the way down to the south from where we are at the moment. So there are windows. We could actually be in a reactor room at the moment, for all I know. We've already found stairs leading down, so I, I suppose that's a good thing. We are actually on the second level of this building at the moment. I don't think there's a third level. I mean, from what we've been able to see so far, there very well may be. We're just gonna keep on moving. And you know what? Let's turn on safe mode. If we accidentally run into anything in the dark, it will warn us first of all. What is that? Oh. It's an engine crane. Interesting. Well, I suppose if we have to lift anything heavy, that'll help us. Good. Okay. Now, as I said it earlier, there is a chance that the reactor could be having trouble. We have to hope that's not the case, but there's no real way for us to know just yet. Hot damn. That is the outside. Okay. Well, we can see out there. Can we see along here? Okay, it's a little bit covered. I thought I saw some other stairs. Yeah, over here towards the west, leading down as well. I don't think we're going to want to jump down just yet, but the description of the scenario leads me to believe that we should probably try and get out of here as fast as we can. As tempted as I would be to linger in this place, I don't know if that's a good idea. Ha, ah, okay. We can see a zombie technician up towards the northeast. One of Dylan's old colleagues shambling about. And they are most certainly shambling. There is no mistaking this for a human. There is something seriously wrong with this technician. And while our lad Dylan here has some skill with judo, I don't think we want to try our luck. Oh boy. But that's something still a little human. A feral mechanic stumbles out of the darkness. This is a wild, human-like creature. Who was probably a mechanic before the cataclysm? You can see it by his work uniform, or by his blood-covered hammer in his hand, or by his all-hating view. Okay, sure. Uh, let's not step onto the edge there. Oh, did you, you just threw a rock at us. The feral just threw a rock at us. Okay, and another. Now, I'm intrigued to see whether or not that zombie technician is just going to fall off the edge. Ow, that hurt! Yeah, okay, let's let's get moving. Uh, we're getting pelted with rocks here. Ow! And the technician did fall off the edge then, I think. Okay, we're going to change to a run to see if we can get away from this hammer-wielding maniac. And we can see over here, we've got some stairs. Okay, what a strange day, Dylan. It's okay. It's only a little bit of damage. Let's just catch our breath before we do anything else. We could travel further along. This is a ridiculously large building after all. Oh, and we can see something down here. A military roadblock. Okay. Can we, can we see it from here? Let's just have a peek out. What, that's, that's all water that we're seeing there. Okay, so we probably could only just see the edge of it. I'm imagining this is the water that may be used as part of the cooling process. Surely that's the case. Well, okay. <laughs> Sooner or later, we are going to have to take the stairs down. I was just hoping to be able to find something else up here for us to be able to use before well, exposing ourselves to more dead. 
This room. Let's see what we got. Okay. A skull dust mask. Sure. A simple piece of cotton that straps over the mouth provides a small amount of protection from airborne illness and dust. It's black with a skull mouth design. Or, sure, we're going to go for that. I think we're probably going to grab the sunglasses as well. The cigarettes? Maybe. Just in case we need to steal our nerves. The insecticide there can stay. Let's chuck on the mask and we'll chuck on the sunglasses as well. Although, in saying that, we already did have protective glasses on, right? The safety glasses. We can't, we're wearing both of them at the moment. It's not affecting our eyes too much at this stage. That's okay. We'll keep them on then for extra protection. As we move further along, we can see a giant worm. I think, I think down here? Yup. Burrowing up through the fences. A huge mutated creature that might once have been a nightcrawler. It possesses a large fanged mouth and a slender body that comes up to Dylan's shoulder. Even with more surely hiding underground. Welcome to Dylan Fan's no good, terrible day. Let's carry on, I say. What are we looking at here? It's a broken generator. Just, just lots and lots of broken generators. Okay. A load of them. Well, we're kind of mapping out the space that we're in. That's all right. Let's turn on safe mode again, just so we don't accidentally walk into an infected and just see if we can look at what we're dealing with. Oh, we're seeing a rat very far below. <laughs> and that's enough to trigger our safe mode. Okay. Well, I'm just going to have to keep my eyes open then, I think. That's that big old block of generators. Hmm. Locked door. Galvanized steel. We're not getting through that. Not with our hands. Ah, but we might be able to get through that. It's open. We open the double glaze window and a moaning groaning person wearing a hazmat suit stumbles towards us this zombie is completely encased in a protective suit that apparently failed to protect it from whatever this infection is at least it can't bite you from inside that suit maybe that's something that we can work with here how good are your judo skills my friend we don't have anything else in our hands right now do we want to give it a shot i feel like we gotta try right and how about that we throw the zombie to the ground for one damage. It's downed and it has minor bleeding. Okay. We managed to strike a few more times, but we're really not doing that much. We are keeping it down though, and we've been grabbed. Okay. A critical. We throw it. It still has us grabbed. All right. A little bit of damage to our leg. A little bit more. Okay. I think we need to try and break this grab. There we go. We're free from it. We could try and stand our ground and fight this thing, but I think we're just going to have to try and move around it for now. We don't have to kill it. We just have to get around it. Oh, come on. <laughs> it is much slower than us. We should be able to do this. Okay. I'm looking for something. Anything in here. There we go. Okay. Let's slow to a walk. We can open up this window. We can get out of here. What have we got? An adjustable wrench. I mean, we can use it as a weapon. Nine to bash. I mean, it could be better than us using nothing at all. As you can see, we were doing like one damage back there. What else do we have? A filter mask cartridge. We'll take it in case we can find an actual filter mask. And Prussian blue tablets. This is a small green pill bottle with a screw top. And importantly, it is a tablet containing oxidized ferrous ferrocyanide salts capable of purging nuclear contaminants from the body if taken after radiation exposure there is a chance we've been ex exposed so we'll take it the multimeter okay useful if we are checking the voltage of things not interested in that but i am interested in the flashlight so we'll take all of that and this flashlight we're going to make sure that we redesignate it to f so that we can activate it we can flash it and we'll be good I'm really tempted to try and take down this hazmat zombie. It could very well have the things that we need. We're just going to wait until we catch our breath here. Ignoring that black rat. And then we'll see if we can make our way back out here. Okay. 
Oh, it's smashed through the window now. Okay, are you still in there? Maybe, maybe not. You could have moved on. We'd already injured it. Hello? It's gone. Where did you go? Is this, uh... Okay, that's a roof. I'm gonna flash our light now. Okay, we can see across the other side. Hmm. Light off, let's jump back in. Check that bin, nothing. Oh, and we can't even open this door from this side. Nope, no good. Okay. Lots of glass shards on the ground there. Let's just stay moving. We got more stairs down. Okay. Let's continue on, Dylan. No idea where your colleague has gotten to. Turn on our light again. Another load of generators. So I'm thinking that these could actually be sitting over the top of the reactors, possibly. Hmm. Turn that light on again. Okay. I think that answered our question of where they went to. Or maybe not. This one's at full health. And this technician over here is looking just fine. Let's turn the light off again. And we're just going to see if we can outpace them by walking. Looking like it's going well for us so far. Where is this going to go? Down into a corner? Yep, and there ain't much there. Okay, let's hope that we're not trapped. We've still got the way down there. I'm just looking to see if we can find more offices. If there are, they might be up here to the north. Okay. Doors. One of them is open. Or rather, can be opened. Let's crack it. Okay. Lots of stairs. Oh, and we do have stairs up. I'm going to quickly move across the way here to see if we can close this door. It's leading to the outside and I'm not a fan of that. Looks like we've got quite a bit of equipment in here. I that we do. Okay, so we're just going to go through one by one to see if we can find things that might be able to help us. Things like a first aid kit box and a mining helmet. Okay, we can do away with our flashlight now. Let's drop that on the ground and we're going to unload it, taking its battery, and we're just going to wear this helmet. Let's um, maybe take the battery that's out of it for now and we'll reload it. There we go. And helmet, we will now make you F, so that we can just hit AF and activate it really quickly. The first aid box is going to have adhesive bandages, regular bandages, some medical gauze, and some scissors, aspirin and antiseptic, just altogether good stuff that is going to be useful for us to have. We did get slightly damaged back there, however, hmm, doesn't fit in any of our pockets. So we might as well use some of the stuff that's here, right? So we're going to take these adhesive bandages and we're going to apply them to our wounds that we have just so that they might start to recover. I would like to take the aspirin just as is and maybe even the antiseptic just in case we run into a bit of trouble. Can we take the gauze? Looks like we can. All right, we'll take that lot, thank you. And we'll carry on down to here. No, don't need any of that. Nothing in the middle locker. Cut resistant gloves. They sound like fun. Pretty good ballistic protection. The bash and cut is so-so. I think that's going to be better than the rubber gloves that we're currently wearing. But we can, of course, check that. So we select the rubber gloves and we scroll on down to the cut resistant ones. Okay, so our rubber gloves have a little bit of acid protection and fire protection, but that's it. Altogether, the cut resistant gloves are going to be better for us. Although in saying that, the encumbrance is wild. Yeah. 40 encumbrance, okay. <laughs> so that's the trade-off, and it's not one that I'm willing to make. We've got a medium disposable battery here, which is going to be a little bit weighty, but we can fit it into our coat just fine. The welding goggles I would be tempted to take, just in case we can find an acetylene torch or something like that, because then we'll be able to hack our way through these doors. Well, less hacking, more burning. And a fire extinguisher down here. And then finally, hiking boots. Hmm. Now we do have our rubber boots that we're wearing. Actually, no, these are just regular boots. So whenever we're unsure, we should compare them. Shift I is what we're doing to do that. And altogether, 
the regular boots are better in terms of protection for both the foot bottoms and everything else, which I'm a little surprised about. Just a little bit more warmth on the hiking boots, but that's that's it. So yeah, no, we'll, we'll stick with the ones that we've got. Good to know. Okay, we've got a few doors that we can peek inside of here. All right, wash stations, might be a bathroom here. We've got some rubber gloves, a plastic sheet, and a canvas sack. Don't think we're gonna need that right now. Also, just more safety equipment in here. No Geiger counters yet. We gotta hope so. Well, if we needed water, we have access to it here now. That's good to know at least. We just heard something get attacked. Hmm, okay. So we have options here. We can pop outside here. I thought that was grass, but it might have been carpet. We can also go up, and I'm tempted to go up before we go out. Do we think something's on the other side here? Yeah, this is this is carpet. Industrial yellow carpet. Okay. We can see staircases on the outside. We're hearing a lot of activity. Another locked door. And we've got an opened one here. Let's just peek inside. Nice. Okay. More work t-shirts. A book on welding and metallurgy. One day that might be useful, but right now it isn't. An acetylene torch. That is what I'm talking about. Oh boy. Okay, well we heard that. Now, the torch isn't going to be able to work just as it is. We need to have a small welding tank or a welding tank to go along with it. Right now, we don't have anything like that. I don't think there was anything in here. No. But we have one part needed to be able to melt our way through metal doors. We also know that there is something on the other side of this wall. Something dead, no doubt. We've got a soldering iron and another mining helmet. The soldering iron, in general, is just going to be quite useful, but we don't have a backpack or anything else like that yet, so that won't help us. Oh boy, definitely a colleague of Dylan Fan here. This is a zombie scientist. Apart from the jet black eyes, the zombie looks less decomposed and inhuman than most. Clad in a tattered lab coat, it seems to have a glimmer of awareness. Not human awareness, but something else. As you watch, its movements look almost marionette-like. We slam the door shut. And the next door there. Nope. No siree. If we can avoid it, we will. What? What is that there? It's a card reader. A smart card reader, no less. The symbol of a gear in front of a bulging biceps is emblazoned on the matte black surface with an illegible heavy industrial company title. I mean, because we can't read. <laughs> a red LED blinks on the card reader. Perhaps an industrial ID card could still open it. So yeah, we need an industrial ID to open this door. We ain't getting that open. We mustn't have had clearance. And it looks like it just leads to the open, to the outer. Oh, hang on. Whoa, boy. We just opened up that window and nearly <laughs> dove outside. There's a wasp outside attacking some giant flies. There's a lot going on. Let's open up this door. Peek inside. And I think what we should be doing is turning on our headlamp as soon as we go in, just to figure out if we are alone or not. We are alone in here. There's a cell phone and just some broken machinery. It looks like a damaged telecom cabinet. Okay. Well, we should check the bin. Always check the bin. The steel chain. Okay. Won't actually help us. Carrying on a little bit further. We've just got more locked doors. This one can be opened. Okay, a question mark. Ooh. What do we have here? Arduino experiments. Okay, and pneumatic knowledge. In the bin, a foil cup. Okay. And ventilation and shutters. We can probably break that. That might lead into whatever this locked room is. More bathrooms? No? Okay. An experimentation area, maybe? We've got rubber bands. Not much else. Okay, with the adjustable wrench in hand, let's smash that. Okay, and that did get us inside. What have we got here? Another locked door. Interesting. 
Smashing that one. I'm a little nervous now, I'll be honest. Okay, we've just got more of these ventilation shutters. That's it. Okay, and I don't think they're actually leading to anywhere in particular. No? All right. Strange. Okay, that's an interesting layout. Hmm. Well, let's carry on. Turn that light back off for now, though. I am tempted to go up just so that we can see what's going on outside. Huh. That's another card reader, but it's open. All right. Turn our light on. And that also leads upstairs. Hmm. Okay. We'll carry on to the west a little bit more, but we know that we have multiple ways to travel up now. Dylan isn't feeling sick or anything like that yet, so I feel like that is working out okay for us right now. No early signs of radiation poisoning. This is a long ass hallway. We've got another door that we can open. I'm just going to wait for a second. Peek inside. Oh, okay, we've got a technician in here. Hasn't seen us yet. There's a thermometer and a pen. We'll just close that door. Pay it no mind. And we'll check this one now. We've heard another sound from inside. Okay, and there's a technician right on us. We're going to run. Damn it. Okay, no getting away from this one. Or rather, we can get away. We'll turn our light off. And it will not be able to follow us so easy now. Let's just slow to a walk, and we're just going to make our way back towards where that card reader was. Okay, I'm not going to close the door, because I'm worried about us being able to get it open again. Let's just peek upstairs. Okay. Well, it is the roof. Maybe there's evacuation. A way out up here. What we can do is climb out onto the roof, and that'll give us a good sight of the area around us. And now, as we zoom down more of the environment around us has been revealed. We can see down here, we've got a military helipad. Okay, and another one over here as well, it looks like. Yeah, okay. Dylan, that might be safety. Making our way out onto this forest trail and down towards this helipad, surely he'll be able to get evacuated there, right? Well, you might hope so. But he's still got a lot of <laughs> this building to go through. Perhaps navigating at the very top of the building will be the best way for us to do it. What do we have there? Just some plastic wrap, maybe? Yep, bubble wrap. Okay. Doesn't look like we can open these windows from the outside here. Oh boy, but you know who can? That zombie scientist. Yeah, another colleague of Dylan. Hmm, what are we going to do here? Well, we do have the wrench in our hand we might have to fight here we're going to start to run back towards this window first of all and then we're just going to get ready ready to fight like our life depends on it and you know what dylan it does and we whack that zombie for 10 damage another seven okay all right and it whacks back hitting our torso but we get a critical 17 damage dylan keep it up And with his leg now bleeding, we're going to drop that adjustable wrench, and he's going to start to put pressure on that wound. <sighs> A little bit of damage. We're doing okay, though. Pick the wrench back up. And let's just catch our breath. They're dead, right? We hear scratch. Don't know where we're hearing that from. From the west and below. Oh, come on. And there's another scientist, dangerously close. We stop trying to catch our breath. Another colleague stumbles out and towards him. We are going to use this window here though. And you know what? I think we're gonna try and do a little bit of movement. Stepping off here, it's gonna take a moment for them to get through there. It slows their movement speed down, effectively. It costs 200 points to be able to move onto there. Get another good whack. We'll back up and we're just gonna keep this up, hoping that it doesn't grab us. Ow, clawed our leg there, that's unfortunate. Come on. And I gotta think that we're going to do more damage with that wrench than we would do with judo. Come on, here we go. Well, that went a lot better than that first attack did. I don't know if the fencing skill really applies to the wrench. I don't think it does in any way, but, well, the scientist is down. 
leg alloy plating installation data for a CBM. Okay, and a post-it note. Uh, let's read it. Stay quiet. They can hear you. Well, that didn't work, did it? Not really. Nothing that we really need on this one. There is a magazine or a book on ammunition stacking. And of course, these are most certainly zombies. And as we know, zombies have a habit of getting back up. Dylan, be sure. I do think, though, that if we can get our hands on a knife or a scalpel, Dylan would probably try to dissect some of the corpses so that he can get a better idea of what's going on with them. He has the principles of biology down. We can actually see that he has a little bit now of zombie biology. He's starting to become familiar with them. What do you have? Washing soda and a subject suit. Interesting. The subject suits are usually reserved for mutated folks. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's make sure that you stay dead. And we're going to be hopping through this window. Let's turn on our light. Ho <laughs> ho Dylan. Okay. All right. Multiple scientists and a hazmat zombie down the, the way here. We're just going to have to start to try and use our speed here, mate. Um, we don't have to run yet until they get closer to us. Right now, we can keep on moving. Just having a quick look and seeing what's broken there on the ground. There's been lots of the windows up here smashed to pieces. Climbing through here, it looks like we might have some books. Many books, actually. Um, let's see what we've got. There is a survivor's note here. This demon thing came after me. It got me good. I shot it, but I don't know if I'll make it. Well, that is unfortunate. Lots of books here. Oh, also, yeah, the things that I have been reading, Dylan can't read. Like, there, there is no point in us taking any of these books because he, he can't read them. Uh... The laptop computer and the e-ink tablet PC might still be useful. Actually, no, he can't. It says it can't use computers at all, like flat. So <laughs> that ain't going to happen. We've got a stick there <laughs> in the trash. Also, don't think that's going to help us. And we're kind of a little bit stuck here now. We're going to have to try and run around this scientist, I think. Hoping that it's not going to grab us. Come on, there we go. And hop over there. Okay, now I wouldn't mind um, getting down at this stage, trying to work through some of the lower levels. It looks like, though, we can actually get through some of these readers. This one's broken. Okay, we continue to smash through. To what? I don't know. Let's turn on our light. More car readers. Dylan does not have clearance for this. Yeah. Even if we wanted to hack it, he, he wouldn't be able to. Okay, dude. Just hold on. What do we got down here? Gasoline and a jumper cable. Oh, it's a portable generator. I see. Okay, carrying along. The rest of the scientists, they all seem to be to the north. We're safely moving about for now. We'll try and smash this getting through both of them really quite quickly. It looks like it's probably a similar kind of setup to what we saw on the other side. Yep. Just more ventilation. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> that legitimately jump scared me. Okay. Let's dodge and weave, Dylan. And slow to a walk again. Okay. We've been grabbed. We need to break that grab. Come on. Come on. We failed a few times, but we got free. And now we just need to go. We need to go, go, go to where? Pretty much back to where we came from I think because at least it was a little bit safer down there the roof ain't working out for us okay and there was another path up this way as well back in and down and uh, I think we're just gonna have to go down right away and hope that we are not going to be followed okay we can we can see a zombie scientist to the west which means that maybe there's some light out here. Hard to tell. Or rather, maybe that's just the one that we're seeing above us. Oh boy, you followed us. Okay. It is much faster than us at this stage. Dylan, you gotta fight. Ah, claws our right arm. It's bleeding. 
Okay. He got his bashing skill up to one. But this is not a good situation to be in. Being tired like this, it means that we are not going to be able to strike all that well. Even so, Dylan, this is a fight for your life at this stage. I know you're out of breath, but you just got to keep on swinging. And there, it's dead. Smash the remains. Now let's drop that wrench. Okay. <sighs> Thankfully, the wound was only a small scratch. We're going to grab that wrench back, see if there was anything that we can use. Water? We'll take it. We're going to need a drink before long. We're already starting to feel hungry. Just a sip. We're in distressing pain. We'll take the one aspirin that we have, and we're going to go and apply actual proper gauze to our torso because we were getting pretty beaten up there. And we'll turn on safe mode and we'll just breathe slowly. Okay. Yeah. Gonna have to manage that stamina a load better. There we go. And now let's hope we can use our light step to get out of here without getting into any more fights. Gotta hope so. Let's turn on our headlamp. The mining helmet lighting the way. We could probably get away with just leaving it on for now. We see a giant centipede. Okay. Just crawling around in here. It's ignoring us for now. I don't know if it'll continue to ignore us. So let's just um, stay away from it for now if we can. What are we standing on at the moment? A metal grate. Over here we've got a rock on the ground. Which makes me think, are we underneath where we were standing before? Could that feral be above us? It's possible. Let's just peek around this corner. We've got two destroyed doors. Or pieces of the, not of the reinforced concrete wall. It would take a lot to be able to break through that, but... Okay, this, this is a, a line, a straight line... Some, no, something has blasted through the reinforced concrete walls. Okay, that's not good. And our standing here probably isn't that good either. What could do that? Um, high-powered weaponry. Oh boy, we're standing in water? At least there, maybe through the piping. Yeah. Something blasted through. Oh, that's, that's, that's not good. Oh my. It's a straight line right through here to the remains of a person. We've got the bodies of two technicians. And they've also got IDs on them. But something blasted them. I don't know what could do that. Well, there are, there are a few things, but that's, that's some very, very high-powered weaponry. I don't know what kind of defenses this uh, plant has. I am thinking we probably want to turn our light off now, though. Then again, seeing... That is wild. That is absolutely wild. Hmm, okay. Dylan can see the IDs on them. I think we're going to need that. So, we cautiously make our way through here. Don't like just all the piping that we're seeing. I feel like we're not meant to be in here. Yeah, something just blasted straight through all of that. And there's water down here as well which is probably part of the coolant system. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's check these bodies then. We've got locking pliers, an industrial ID card. We're going to grab both of those. Okay. Pick them on up. I don't even know if we're going to worry about smashing these bodies. We're not going to linger here. We've got something over here. Something did. Oh, it's a huge toad. How wonderful. We've, we've got a bat flying across the way. We're not seeing much further with our light. Not right now. And a, we've got a giant centipede. Cool. 
What did that? <laughs> what? What did that? Okay. This is fine. This is totally fine. Okay. Well, our ID card will work at those doors. And we can see one of them down to our southwest at the moment. So that's where we're going to start to head towards. Okay, a giant centipede has spotted us. We're going to turn off our light. I don't think it can get to us from the, where it is. Just because the piping you can't cross. Okay, what kind is this? Industrial. Okay, that's good. That's us. Does it consume the card though? Well, let's see. Do we still have two? Ah, uh, we got one. So, yeah, maybe. We insert it. Yeah, we can't, we can't get that back. Okay, we got a train track. A railroad. That could maybe lead out of here. Let's turn this light on. Oh boy. Alright, well we got another one. To our west. I'm gonna carry on up here. What is this? It's a miniature locomotive. <laughs> okay. Can we operate this? It's got 3% fuel right now. Yes, we can. Yes, we totally can. Okay, does this thing have headlights? Uh, doesn't look like it. Let's examine the vehicle. Yeah, it's got a coal bunker. Um, all right, 16 minutes until it's empty. Where are we taking this thing? <gasps> okay, to the north, we can see light. We can see daylight. Um, okay, so we're going to have to reverse out of here then, right? Yep, there we go. Look at us reversing. Uh, let's use our light here, just so we can see what's going on. This might just work. What, what do we have out there? We hear screeching sounds as we make it outside. What am I looking at here? That's a railroad crossing signal. And these are, it's just gravel? Just a lot of gravel, okay. And cross tiles for train rails. Well, we, what is that to the west? We've done it. We've made it outside successfully. We can see all this disturbed ground here, churned up earth from freaking giant worms. <laughs> that is a massive electric locomotive. Well, we've made it to the end of the line. Let's stop our vehicle here. We're outside. Dylan, you've made it outside. Somehow. And, yeah. We are still considered to be within the plant. Looking to our north at the moment. We've got some barbed wire. But that ain't much. We can fight through that. We can get out. And from here, we can follow along that road and make our way down to this surely wonderful and nice military helipad. That's the plan. But that, Legionnaires, shall be for the next episode. Thank you so much for joining me for yet another adventure here in the Cataclysm with Dylan Fan, our lab technician, our survivor. While he has made his way out of the plant for now, there's no telling what he might have picked up while he was in there. All of his colleagues, well, they weren't doing that hot. And that area down the bottom, that solid blast through all those walls that disturbs me even as a long-term cataclysm player whenever you run into weirdness you should be afraid and dylan no doubt was quaking let's take in that sweet morning air and hope that we don't have a lethal dose of radiation <laughs> i ask you all if you enjoyed today's episode please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show as for now i have been rykon you have all been awesome, and until next time, stay tuned.